Here we're biking over to St. James to go to Polo Park, probably the biggest shopping district in Winnipeg. Polo Park is mostly parking lots, but it also has a giant mall and a bunch of big box stores, so accordingly it's one of the most car dependent parts of the city. There was a festival going on, so there were a ton of people out today, though this area is usually quite busy anyway. This was kind of annoying, but everyone's going quite slow, so there wasn't too much risk. This bike path is quite new, and it's not bad, but it could be wider, which has multiple benefits. Um, first of all, it allows people to ride side by side, which is nice. And it's also better for electric bikes, which are exploding in popularity. Sure, go ahead. Bike paths need to be safe enough that people feel comfortable riding with their kids. How cute. Lots of nice street art in Winnipeg. This is my partner. We bike together quite often. Wolseley Avenue is what I would describe as invisible bike infrastructure. Not Just Bikes has a great video about invisible bike infrastructure in the Netherlands. Although there's no bike lane here, this street is part of the city's open streets program and is sort of semi-pedestrianized. Cars aren't supposed to go further than a block on it during certain hours, and they can use a street further north instead. It's nicer to bike here than in a lot of bike lanes in the city, because the city has reimagined this as a cyclist and pedestrian space, and a lot of bike lanes are put in car-centric spaces. This is one of my favorite parks. Hi there. Sometimes when the river's high, this bridge becomes flooded, and the detour that you have to take on Portage Avenue is far less pleasant. Let's give a good first impression of St. James. This new bike lane is godsend. Though it's not perfect, these intersections can be a little dicey. Since cyclists don't have priority, you can easily get cut off by people turning. This intersection is kind of terrifying, and really unpleasant to drive through as well. You see tons of conflicts between vehicles here. You really should go to the light, but I get tired of constantly having to make weird detours and go out of my way to avoid stuff like this. We made it. This is a cute local hardware store, and they even put in a bike rack recently. Let's see what it's like to walk around St. James. I can tell you already, we're going to be walking through a lot of parking lots, because St. James is mostly parking lots. Big, mostly empty parking lots like this one.
It's annoying that this person kind of halfway tried to cut us off, but I get why they're anxious to make this turn so they aren't blocking traffic. This is one of many problems with strodes. Highway speeds combined with lots of driveways and sharply turning vehicles. And this is only part of the parking here. There's a giant parking structure, which is bigger than the businesses. And this is really just a wasteland of disused space. The city might be able to afford to put something here. They didn't spend so much money on this. The light assumes there are no pedestrians unless you push the button. One of many little design features to remind everyone that this is a space intended for cars, not people. Here, once again, a parking lot far, far larger than the businesses it serves, which is rarely even half full. All taxpayers subsidize these free parking spaces. The US, for example, spends over a third of a trillion every year subsidizing free parking. We found another bike rack. Nice. There's no bike racks here though. Although there is a picture of a bike. And here we are at the Polo Park Mall, which is 56% parking lot and car infrastructure. 61% if you count the parkades on the north and east side. Pedestrianized space. Here's me climbing some stuff I'm not supposed to be climbing. No crosswalk here. Also no sidewalk. No sidewalk. There's a nice new road though. So yeah, that's the ride from Osborne Village to Polo Park. It's actually a really nice ride, and one I do just for fun sometimes, but as you can see, biking and walking in St. James is challenging. There aren't a lot of places where you can have a serene walk or a quiet conversation. Of course, there are some quiet residential areas and parks in St. James that I didn't show here, but frankly, most people going to St. James to shop aren't going to pass through those places. The pedestrian hostile design elements in St. James are pretty inescapable. That said, the separated bike path short as it is, it gives me hope that this place can look different someday. Like so much of our city, it needs to be reimagined. <laughs>